Welcome to this Mass Media video for hypothesis testing. To start with, let's take a look at terminology for hypothesis testing. Hypothesis tests are based on two hypotheses. The null hypothesis, which we denote as H0, so that's the null hypothesis. Which again we denote H0. And the alternate hypothesis, which we denote as H1. Now, H0, the null hypothesis, is a statement about the value of a population parameter, i.e. a parameter of the distribution of a random variable, which our data will tell us whether or not to reject. The alternate hypothesis, H1, is what we believe the parameter is if we reject the null hypothesis. In general, the null hypothesis is something that we want to show is false. And the reason for this is because hypothesis tests do not show if something is true only if something is false. But we can find out something true that we want to know by showing that the null hypothesis is false. To this end, the null hypothesis is usually that a parameter takes a specific value, while the alternate hypothesis is usually that the parameter differs from the specified value, rather than specifying another value. A hypothesis test is the means by which we generate a test statistic that directs us to either reject or not reject the null hypothesis. The test statistic is a summary of the collected data and should have a sampling distribution specified by the null hypothesis. Okay, so the other term that we need to be aware of here is the test statistic. Okay, so that gives us everything we need there for terminology for hypothesis testing. Let's move on now to take a look at one or two tailed tests. Now, hypothesis tests can be one-tailed or two-tailed, and this depends on H1. In a one-tailed test, H1 takes the form, so this is for a one-tailed test. Now, for a one-tailed test, H1 takes the form P greater than X or P less than X, where H0 is that P is equal to X. So for H0, is that p is equal to x okay however in a two-tailed test so in a two-tailed test here h1 takes the form so h1 takes the form p is not equal to x where h not is that p is equal to x, just like we saw in a one-tailed test, okay? So, like we noted here, for a one-tailed test, h1 takes the form p is greater than x, or p is less than x, and h0 is that p is equal to x. And for a two-tailed test, h1 takes the form p is not equal to x, and h0 is that p is equal to x, just like a one-tailed test. So that gives everything we need there for one or two-tailed tests. Moving on now to take a look at significant data. Now we reject the null hypothesis when the data we observe is unlikely to have occurred if it were true. And specifically we state a significance level alpha before we perform the hypothesis test and if the probability of getting the data we got is less than alpha in a one-tailed test or less than alpha over two in a two-tailed test, well if we assume H0 is true then we would reject H0. So just note that here, for a one-tailed test we use alpha, so that's for a one-tailed test and for a two-tailed test, that's alpha over two. Okay. Now, the way we test the probability of getting the data is by looking at the sampling distribution of the test statistic, which is set by the null hypothesis. You will usually be told the significance level to use, and some common significance levels would be 5%, which represents alpha here, we could also write that as 0.05, okay? Another common example would be 1%, which again is just our alpha here, our significance level, and we could again write that as 0.01 there. So that gives us everything we need there for significant data. Moving on now to take a look at the critical region. 
Now the critical region is the set of values of the test statistic that would cause H0 to be rejected. The first value inside the critical region is called the critical value. And if the test statistic is as extreme or more extreme than the critical value, then we reject H0. A one-tailed test has a single critical region containing the highest or lowest values. A two-tailed test has two critical regions one containing high values and one containing low values. You can test whether your data is significant by finding the critical region and seeing if the test statistic falls within it. So that gives us everything we need there for critical regions. And finally, let's take a look now at the actual significance level and p-value. So the p-value is the probability of obtaining the results we got if H0 is true. And if the p-value is less than alpha, or alpha over 2 for a two-tailed test, we reject H0. So let's just note that here. So if the p-value is less than alpha, that's for a one-tailed test. Or if the p-value is less than alpha over 2 for a two-tailed test, then we reject H0. Okay, so we reject H0. And if the p-value is greater than alpha, or greater than alpha over 2, we do not reject H0. Okay, we would accept H0 in other words. And finally, the actual significance level is the probability of the data being in the critical region if H0 is true. For continuous data, this is the same as the significance level. However, for discrete data, it can differ. So that gives us everything we need there for actual significance level and p-values. And that concludes this mass media video on hypothesis testing.